Welcome back to Introduction to iOS Application Development at SSFS. In this video, we are going to take a look at functions. Oftentimes when you're writing functions in the context of a class or structure, you'll often hear them referred to as methods. So I might use those two terms, functions and methods, interchangeably in this video, but understand that they mean roughly the same thing. So let's take a look at the general pattern of a function. So the key word to write a function is func and f-u-n-c. So let's just create a very generic function called greet and then parentheses. We'll talk about whether fu if functions return something, what that looks like, but for right now this is going to be a very basic function with no parameters and no return type. Then a curly brace and then you need to end the curly brace after the function is complete. So I'll put the body of my code and in this case I'll just write print Hello and welcome to my program. And that's it. That's a very simple function. I have the word func, the function name, braces, and then the body of the code. When I want to call that function, I simply type the name of it and it should be executed. I'm going to hit the play button and it writes, it executes, calls the function executes the codes inside, and returns control back to where the function was called. So again, that's a very simple function. Let's take a look at a function that may have some parameters. So I'll create a function called circumference of circle. And in order to know the circumference of a circle, I need to know the diameter of that circle. So I'll use my diameter. And in Swift, you need to specify exactly what type the parameter is. So in this case, I know that a circumference could be a decimal value, so I'm going to make it of type double. If I had multiple parameters, I would need to define each type separately. So I'll put in the curly braces, and I'll create my function. So I'll say let area equal 3.14 times the diameter. So pi times the diameter. And I'm, I'm estimating for pi here. There are ways to get more specific, but we'll deal with that at another time. So now I can just print uh, the area of the circle is, and then again I can use that string interpolation to print the area of the circle. So now when I call the circumference of the circle function, again, I can start typing in and Swift will uh, complete it for me. Uh, let's say 4.5. And I'll run it here. And I get the area of the circle is 14.13. So that is a very basic look at parameters. Let's take a look at if I, I do have multiple parameters, I can do function area of a rectangle and I could have the length which could be a double and I could have the width which could be a double and in this case the area equals length times width and then I can print the whoops forgot my quote the area of the rectangle is uh, and you can see I have two parameters. I use them both here to calculate the area and I can do area of a rectangle. Let's do 7.9 and notice I'm hitting, I'm using the tab key to tab to each different parameter and 2.5. And when that function is called, it prints out the value to the console. So that is a very simple look at functions with basic parameters. Now notice that I have just been putting these labels in here, length and width. There are actually 
uh, suggestions for how functions should be named in Swift in terms of making it read almost like English. So let's consider another function. So I'm going to consider a function, oops, calculate fare. So I'm going to calculate the cost of a fare uh, from one, let's say, city to another. And so I might have origin which is a string I'm going from one city and destination is another string. And then I might have in here print the fare from origin to dest oops. destination is expensive. And again, I'm not going to worry about calculations at this point right now. So when I called that function, I would say calculate fare, uh, let's say from Brazil to Costa Rica. And I would get that. So the way I would read this function is calculate fare, origin, Brazil, destination, Costa Rica. A much, I guess, easier way to read that function would be if it was calculate fare from Brazil to Costa Rica. That seems to me a much better way of reading that calculate fare from Brazil to Costa Rica. That, that flows off the tongue a little bit better. We could, we could make the change here. We could say from and to, and then make this would make from and to. And let's, I'm just going to put a comment in front of this to so we don't get an error. So now this works, but now this sentence, the fare from, from, to, to, is expensive. That doesn't read well. So Swift has a way of accommodating both styles with what are called internal versus external labels. So I can actually have two labels here. The external labels, or the ones that are called from outside the function, would go first. So I would actually want from as the first one, and then I can put origin here. Same thing with this, two will be my external, and then destination would go here. So I can move these back to origin, and this back to destination, and I get no errors. So the function call still reads nicely, calculate fare from Brazil to Costa Rica, and inside the function, print the fare from origin to destination is expensive, also reads well. So this is a much easier function to read. And if I hit uh, the play, it works successfully. So oftentimes you will see two labels here. This one will be used from outside the function when it's called, this is used inside the function, so external, versus internal. It's a very handy way to make very legible code. Now, if I don't always do that in the videos, I'm doing that for time, but you should make sure to do that in your code whenever possible. If, however, there is a legitimate reason to not have both an external and internal labels, you can replace the external one with an underscore. So I'm going to replace both of these with an underscore and set these back to origin and destination. If I do this, use the underscore, that means I can eliminate the labels. So I can calculate fare, and I don't need the um, labels inside, I can just put Brazil and Costa Rica. I can eliminate these labels and it works just as well. 
But it, the, again, this is not the recommended or preferred way to do it, and it should be used uh, as the exception rather than the rule. All right, let's talk for a little bit about default parameter values. Sometimes a value can be passed so often that you don't necessarily want to type it each time a function is called. So I can create what's called a default value in the parameters. So let's say I have a function called my morning meal is. And again, I'm going to use this new underbar. My meal might be a string with beverage string. And since I almost always have coffee with for my beverage, I can put equals coffee. And so I can say print you are having meal with beverage. Put a period there. Okay. So when I call that, again, notice I use the underbar here, so there's no external label. So look how this function reads. My morning meal is, and I see I have two values here. Uh, let's just do this one. My morning meal is uh, bacon. So my mor again, this reads, my morning meal is bacon. If I had my morning meal is meal bacon, well, that would be repetitive. So that's why I use the underbar here. So there's no external label. And then when I run it, it says, you are having bacon with coffee. It used my default value for beverage. Now, if I wanted to have something different, I could say my morning meal is eggs. And then I could say with, whoops, uh, tea. So look at how this reads. My morning meal is eggs with tea. And you can see why the using the having an external and an internal label can make this look a lot better. So when I run this one, you are having eggs with tea. And that looks, and again, I've used the default parameter. I can also override that default parameter. So we've looked at functions with parameters, with no parameters, with multiple parameters. The last thing we're going to talk about is functions with return values. So let me go back up to my circumference of a circle. Or actually, the this circumference of a circle, and let's modify that. So instead of printing the area of the circle is, we're going to return the actual value. So in order to tell the function that we're returning something, after I define any parameters, I put a dash and then the greater than symbol. So it looks like an arrow. So it indicates a return. And then I say what type I am returning. So I'm going to be returning a type double. So this indicates I'm returning a double. And notice that Swift quickly realizes I haven't put a return statement in. So all I'm going to do is return area. And this increases the flexibility of that function, because maybe I don't want to print it all the time. I might want to do something with it. So down here, let's go ahead and run this. You can see there's, I don't have any print statement for the circumference of a circle because it returned that value but did nothing with it. So I could create a variable to hold that. I could say let circle area, or sorry, circle circumference equal. And then I could print that value. I could use uses in some other part of calculations on my my code but for right now I'll just print circle circumference let's go ahead and run that and it printed it right there so again anytime you're returning something you need the dash the greater than symbol and then the return type you must include the return type it's a great way for the compiler to check to make sure that uh, everything is correct so that's a very brief look at functions.
In the next video, we'll start looking at making custom data types uh, using structures.